So yeah, today we're going to be talking about Uranus. Leave your jokes in the comments below. Okay, yeah, technically I've always been pronouncing it as Uranus, and that's the more proper way of saying it. And essentially what we're going to be discussing are some of the new discoveries and some of the more unusual discoveries from the mysterious seventh planet. The planet that we actually know very little about, and the planet whose moons are even more mysterious for reasons we're going to discuss today. But because of the unique position Uranus currently has across the solar system, it presents the scientists with a unique opportunity to study exactly what happens inside this planet, which led to several major discoveries in just the last few months. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries coming from various telescopes, including the James Webb Space Telescope, in regards to Uranus and its 27 moons. Although we're mostly going to focus on 5 moons and some of the more unusual discoveries that sort of surprise the scientists. And I think here it's important to start with some of the most recent observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. The observations that only lasted for approximately 12 minutes, and in those incredible 12 minutes, this is what it was able to see. An incredibly beautiful composition of Uranus and its major moons. But what's really intriguing in this image is of course how extremely bright the rings appear in this image compared to anything else we've ever seen. On top of several bright features that are now visible inside the atmosphere as well. Just to give you a comparison, here is the only image we previously had of this planet from the Voyager probe, which basically make it look completely plain and somewhat boring. Although even here, if you look at the planet in different light, for example infrared light, you're able to see something else happening along the polar regions. But prior to this, a lot of previous observations basically gave us this. Not a lot to work with here, with the planet barely being visible. The previous Hubble images are a little bit better, but they still do not provide a lot of detail and mostly show us the surface in optical light. But the February 2023 observation from the James Webb Space Telescope suddenly reveals a planet with a somewhat dynamic atmosphere, specifically an unusual brightening at the center of the polar cap. And that's because Uranus, like planet Earth, has its own seasons. But the seasons here usually last for a very long time. 42 years of sunlight followed by 42 years of darkness because the planet also spins on its side. And so here, as the northern hemisphere becomes exposed to the sunlight, the polar regions along the hemispheres also change color. And this polar cap that's unique to Uranus will most likely vanish in the next couple of decades. But what's intriguing in this image is of course that you can also see individual clouds, only visible in infrared wavelengths. And in this case, the scientists are almost certain that this is related to extremely powerful storm activity that's obviously also visible on other planets as well. But unlike Earth, where this is all water vapor, on Uranus it's water, methane and ammonia. And we obviously also see 11 out of 13 known rings, with a lot of them appearing brighter than anything else before. And there is something really intriguing discovered about the rings very recently that we're going to discuss in a couple of minutes. But just by itself this image is already quite incredible. But more recently, the scientists used a microwave telescope, specifically the Very Large Array from New Mexico, to try to look into this polar region and discover what's inside the storm, confirming that this is actually a very powerful event as visible in these images. Here you can see it in three different frequencies of microwave wavelengths, and what this essentially proves is the fact that pretty much 7 out of 8 planets in the solar system all contain storms. And not just any storms, very powerful cyclones and anticyclones with overall similar physics, but usually extremely different in size and more importantly, different in composition. Here's what we have on Earth, here's something we have on Mars, and in this case this is mostly dust. Jupiter obviously has a bunch, including the famous Great Red Spot, and something similar has also been found on Neptune and Saturn as well, with Venus having its own versions of polar vortices as well. The only planet that we haven't found anything on just yet is Mercury, probably because it has no atmosphere, but for all we know it has its own version of these cyclones that we just haven't found yet. But unlike Earth, where all of this is formed over water and relies on very specific heat exchange, a lot of these other vortices around other planets seem to essentially form over a fixed location and potentially represent extremely massive three-dimensional structures. We basically only see the surface. With these discoveries also implying that this seems to be slightly warmer and drier air, which is what we expect a cyclone to have. And so even though we call these planets ice giants, the reality is that they are extremely active 
and possess a lot of internal activity that we just cannot observe very easily. But a lot of discoveries in the last few months were also in regards to the moons and the rings, or technically the connection of the rings to the moons. With the first major discovery coming in regards to the five main moons of Uranus. Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, Oberon, and Miranda. You can see that there are four very large moons, and Miranda is a bit on the smaller side. Now, a lot of this was mostly based on modeling and trying to figure out exactly what's on the surface and inside these moons, but overall the scientists discovered that these moons seem to be quite insulated with a relatively thick surface that in theory should allow them to sustain liquid oceans inside. And although maybe not as big and as profound as oceans on objects like Europa that you see right here, the moon of Jupiter, it's quite likely that these moons would contain heat sources on the inside to maintain warm environments, as well as even materials like ammonia which can act as antifreeze. With recent evidence that you can find right here, even suggesting some kind of a flow that happened relatively recently on the moon Ariel, possibly from some kind of a subsurface ice volcano. And the study suggests that some of these oceans might even be warm enough to sustain habitability for potential primitive life. In other words, we have another planetary system in the solar system that contains moons with oceans inside and even a chance for some kind of a subsurface life. Which is of course an excellent opportunity for someone to finally start planning a mission to this unusual faraway planet. Except for the Voyager 2 probe, nobody has ever visited Uranus or Neptune, and the potential mission here has been actually in planning for decades now. Nothing so far has happened. But then we have some really intriguing discoveries from the strangest moon in the solar system, Miranda. The smallest of the big moons around Uranus. And just looking at the picture of this moon, can kind of explain why we call it the strangest moon. Or sometimes the ugliest moon. Because it has these unusual, very difficult to explain features, which it really shouldn't have. Its surface is covered in a lot of very unusual stuff. And it's also home to the largest 20 km high cliff known as Verona Rupes. Apparently if you jump from this, it would take you nearly 15 minutes to reach the bottom. And so overall Miranda has one of the most extreme surfaces in the solar system, containing a lot of unusual scratches, a lot of unusual chasms, weird valleys, and a lot of features that are just very difficult to explain. It's also about half ice, half silicate rock, so even its composition is a little bit strange. And because this moon is so small and overall is believed to be relatively cold on the inside, it's impossible to explain any of this using some kind of a geologic activity such as volcanoes or things like plate tectonics. And so the question has always been, what happened here? Why is it like this? It should not have enough heat and enough energy on the inside to produce any of these geological features. And well, there's always been three main explanations. Some kind of an impact, some kind of a volcanic or plume deposit, similar to the ones we observe on Io, or maybe this was from the rings of Uranus. And so one of the recent studies wanted to investigate exactly how possibly all of this formed, specifically looking at the relatively thick layer of regolith and a number of different craters located on the surface that can actually help the scientists determine how thick the surface is. And what the scientists realized in this case is that, well, it seems that due to the location around Neptune and due to the composition on the surface compared to the rings around Saturn, there's actually a very high correlation between the two. Or basically, a lot of this might have come from ancient Uranus rings that over time deposited all of the material on the surface as this moon, sometimes back in the past, moved across the rings or very close to them, capturing the material in the process. Which of course implies several things. First of all, that this moon was much smaller and very likely contained different materials in the past, but second of all, the rings around Uranus must have been massive before. Massive enough to enlarge the moon and create all of these unusual features. And because both Miranda and the rings also seem to possess slightly similar blue color, on top of a lot of other features, at the moment the scientists believe that this is maybe the best possible explanation. This moon basically sucked up a lot of ring material in the process forming these unusual features we see on the surface, which by itself already warrants a potential mission to this moon, as it's going to help us learn so much about Uranus and the entire solar system, with I guess the obvious, more intriguing question in this case, being Saturn. Can something like this also happen around Saturn in the future? Will one of the moons absorb some of the rings and possess these features kind of similar to Miranda? 
We're not going to be able to answer these questions just yet, but there is a video, a relatively recent video, about Saturn's rings and new discoveries from those rings as well that you can find in the description. Although when it comes to Uranus and its moons, at least for now, that's pretty much all we know and that's what the scientists have recently discovered. Once we'll learn something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with the next video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.